and Tanika, flooding is nothing new for these neighbors here on Palmer Street. But take a look at the water. It's past my ankles, almost up to my knees, which is a first for these neighbors. And they say that this is an issue and it's causing a lot of problems. From pretty much any angle, Nancy Jones's home is surrounded with water. From the front of her house, to our backyard. This was just all pure, just a sheet of water. There, there was no grass showing. It was just a lake. Jones has lived on Palmer Street in Mayport for two years. She tells me the street often floods when it rains, but this type of flooding is a first. It's normal after a big rainfall, we'll have water standing like this, but this this went a little bit further when it flooded the entire town here. I was out here last night when more than 11 inches of rain was dumped in Mayport alone. Jones says 24 hours later, the water is still here. So my photographer Mark attached our GoPro camera to the bottom of our truck to get a good look at the depth of the water. And it doesn't look like the water has anywhere to go. As the wheels of this train roll right through this intersection on Hendricks Avenue, the wheels of these cars are still at a standstill. And because of the nearby hospitals, ambulances also frequent this area, oftentimes getting stuck behind the barriers, as you can see in this video taken by JTA. Today we watched as one train took nearly eight and a half minutes to pass. This is ridiculous. I see like three of the uh, locomotives in front, so that must be a big train. Back in January, we showed you how some drivers reported waits of up to 20 minutes. JTA has teamed up with the FDOT to apply for a federal grant to help front the cost of what it would take to alleviate the problem. Well, it adds track, uh, upgrades switches, and, um, and, and, and so it really modernizes the, the system so that, uh, that, that the trains can go through quicker. Commuters tell me it's a long overdue. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Action News Jack Samantha Manning shows us the thousands of dollars in damage left behind. This is one of three cars that was stolen from this Riverside driveway in just the last five weeks. It was found totaled because the suspension on the car was damaged beyond repair. It busted out of the window and then you see dings and dents and scratches. Kaylin Hunter and his fiance Kristen Camastro say two of their cars were stolen in the middle of the night in just the last few weeks. This is how they got in. Um, they just busted this guy out, pulled the back lock on this back door. And just this weekend, it happened again. A third car was stolen right outside of their home. It belonged to his sister who was visiting. And the car was stolen in less than 30 minutes of her parking in my driveway. Now the couple says they're fed up. <laughs> and they're moving out, packing up all of their belongings and heading to a new neighborhood. I don't want to live here anymore. What's, I don't feel safe. Hunter says the car thefts have cost his family around $75,000. They're smashing, grabbing, and taking pretty quick. He's hoping to now put an end to those worries for good by leaving this house and this driveway behind. Police have collected fingerprints as evidence from the stolen cars. So far, no arrests have been made. Reporting in Riverside, Samantha Manning, CBS 47, Action News Jax. These buses will be carrying more than 50,000 kids from all over Duval County on the first day of school. And I learned these drivers not only have to pay attention to what's on the bus, but what's around them as well. Everyone seated back there. Bernie School Bus Company is going over their bus routes, making sure drivers are ready for the first day of school in Duval County. You crossed me. You know, the very first day of school, August 24th, you've got, again, just under a thousand more school buses on the road. Paul Soares with Duval County Schools says more than 50,000 students will ride these buses on the first day of school. We do have people that run our stop signs. That's a problem bus drivers Latrell Rouse and Iris Figueroa says happens a lot. So my photographer Mark and I rode along on one of their buses to see firsthand. Within five minutes of our bus ride, we saw cars driving by. They're supposed to stop. Even though the stop sign was out and someone was crossing the road, we tried again two minutes later. You can see this white truck driving by. Blowing right through it. 
It was not until our third attempt where everyone on the road actually stopped. Uh, we certainly need people to do their best to be as safe as they can be because you know, there's no real forgiveness if, if one person gets hurt. I found out that according to state law, cars have to stop in both directions on a two-lane highway or multi-lanes with no barrier in the middle. You do not have to stop on the opposite side if a barrier is in the middle of the road. It's a way to say thank you to those who have served our country. Around 9,000 wreaths were placed at veterans' tombstones in Jacksonville National Cemetery, including one for Esther Perlitz's husband, Robert, who served in the Marine Corps. He served his time in his country. <sighs> Esther came with her daughter and grandkids to honor her husband, who died only 10 weeks ago. This is their first Christmas without him. Tomorrow would have been our anniversary of 42 years. He's a good man, and we missed him, and we all love him. For those with lost loved ones who have served in the military, Reeds Across America is a way to honor their memory. It means to me more than anybody can ever imagine. Rosina Anderson's husband, Captain Paul Anderson, served in the Navy for 32 years. His last post was at Naval Air Station Jacksonville. She says she discussed possibly burying her husband in Arlington, Virginia before he passed, but they decided to keep him closer to home. I'm very, very happy I kept him here. I have the chance to see him more often, to visit him. The cemetery is also meant to teach children the value and sacrifices made by our veterans. The Perlitz family says they were grateful for the opportunity to remember Robert Perlitz for his devotion to his country. We miss him very much. Reporting in North Jacksonville, Samantha Manning, Fox 30, Action News Jack. Bike MS was voted the best ride in the Southeast two years ago by Competitor Magazine. Since thousands have signed up, there are seven routes to choose from, varying anywhere from 36 to 166 miles. I did 59 yesterday and 37 today. Ellen Callaher was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 23 years ago. It had even gotten to the point where it was difficult for me to even walk to my mailbox. The degenerative neurological disease causes muscle weakness, numbness, and visual impairment. Callaher tells me she's experienced it all, but medication has helped, and that's not the case for many. There's a lot of people, no matter what they do, they're not still walking. They're not still able to care for themselves. So, so I do it for them and myself. For the last 29 years, Bike and Mess has raised millions. This year, more than 1,800 men, women, and even children bike from TPC Sawgrass to Daytona Beach and back, depending on the route. We've watched several groups making their way to this finish line. They've all participated in this ride. In order to do so, they had to raise money for MS. They've come from all over, including as far as the Caribbean. And for people affected by MS, they say it means the world to them that so many want to help. I used to feel lonely. I don't feel lonely when I come out here and I see all these people uh, fighting and trying to do something about this. Because MS really takes a lot from a lot of people. Those who couldn't make the ride showed their support in other ways. As for Callaher, she vows to continue coming back. I'm going to do it every year until I die. Reporting from Ponte Vedra, Katie McKee, Fox 30, Action News Jacks. We first introduced you to that man stranded here at JIA last week. He thought that a bench like this was going to be his temporary home until he could catch a flight out of town. Then something special happened. Uh, I was fortunate enough, this is where I've been sleeping at. Nobody in our area may have a worse blizzard 2016 travel story to tell from Florida than Arthur Powers. My flight was canceled, but I was only planning on being here for a couple of days, and now it's, well, it's going on a whole week. Powers spent Thursday night sleeping at the airport instead of his own bed in Detroit. Since then, this ex-cop has spent the last two nights at Alice and John Boydo's home. The local military family first saw Power's story Friday evening on Action News Jax. Yes, this is going to be my home until the end. So they drove to the airport to open their home to this complete stranger. Since then, they've cooked. This is 15 bean and ham soup. Kept a close eye on the changing flights, both on the phone. And thanks for calling American Airlines. And online. Right now, it says it's on time to leave. And even became friends. Oh, thank you so much. It was fun to have him around here. It's just been great. We've, we've found a new friend. Yeah, you can't ask for a greater blessing.
This toy car is missing something, the steering wheel. Instead, it has a joystick, which is one of the ways engineering students at UNF are modifying toys to make them accessible for all children. From wires to wheels, this group is busy being Santa's little helpers. This is what powers our, uh, our electronics here. This is five-year-old Maddox. He loves his mom, loves music, and now is loving his new Spider-Man car. He can't sit up or roll, but thanks to adaptive technology, he can maneuver his own environment. He has nothing like this at home. He's got my back, you know, dad's shoulders. <laughs> That's as close as he gets. We were there as Maddox strapped in and tried out his new ride. At first, he needed a little help, but slowly but surely, he got it on his own. So this is a first for him, and so it's, it's definitely a milestone. The goal is to pair little ones with toys they may otherwise never experience. It's something that they're going to learn with, and it's going to impact them forever. A lot goes into the finished product. Well, we actually took off the steering, and the joystick is what will actually control the front and back motion of the car. There's tweaking, then testing. For Ricardo Jarina, every toy has deep meaning. He has one brother with spina bifida and another with cerebral palsy. Being able to help kids with similar conditions to me feels personal, like I'm helping someone else's little brothers or someone else's little sister. UNF's program can't help everyone, but each smile, each toy fitting is worth it for Maddox and everyone involved. The more kids that could be helped with something like this, I just think it's great. Other universities across the country have taken notice of this program. Some have even asked to visit so they can see firsthand how it works. Reporting at UNF, Erica Bennett, CBS 47, Action News Jax.